hello student welcome back we are going to start our session it is module 2 lecture 4 satellite communication mece 106a songita roy assistant professor electronics and communication engineering department narula institute of technology today's topic is satellite link design under this we are going to start review of the previous lesson lesson downlink design domestic satellite system uplink design design of satellite link for specific carrier to noise ratio satellite link design in the previous class we have started the satellite link and its how it is uh, communicated essentially radio relay link much like the terrestrial microwave radio relay link with the singular advantage of non requiring as many retransmitters as are required in the terrestrial link transmission of signals over a satellite communication link requires line of sight communication but since theoretically three equidistant satellites in the geosynchronous orbit can effectively cover over 90% of the earth surface the need for multiple retransmission is removed now this is a concept how it can be done in satellite these are the base station and this is the satellite in the space this is up link and this is down link in general up link frequencies higher than that of the down link because up link when a signal is transmitted this is basically from earth so as the frequency increases the power of the signal increases so if it is transmitted with a high frequency so more power is needed so that can be feasible from the earth but if it is coming from the satellite if it is low frequency then the power consumption also requiring low obviously that is advantageous from the point of view of it is very far from earth as well as as the signal frequency increases corresponding power requirement increases so corresponding the equipment necessary equipment also become heavier for that reason uplink frequency is always higher than that of downlink frequency apart from that as the frequency increases its wavelength decreases as the wavelength decreases so the uh friction or the attenuation due to the friction between the different particles in the space and also atmosphere reduces so this is uh, the signal that is coming from the antenna from the transmitter is it is known as effective isotropic radiated power so this is the transmitter so at the output from the transmitter is ptx then it is feeder then it is from antenna so gain of the antenna of the transmitter and it is the gain of the antenna of the receiver and the reverse process is there at the receiver section so gain of the antenna and the temperature corresponding uh, it will be discussed in the today's class the noise temperature is this ratio is very important we will discuss this today so there is another important thing is the distance between the transmitter and the receiver and as the distance increases the signal attenuates very quickly and it is exponential so there is lot of losses associated in between this gap and this gaps in case of satellite is thousands of miles that is minimum for geostationary satellite 36000 minimum or approx so as the distance increases corresponding path loss also increases so these are the some analytical view for this how the path loss over the distance it is shown in the curve so it is the how the path loss affected and it is shown in the ground but the same thing will happen in case of satellite because as the distance increases there are also different type of vegetations over there buildings are there atmospheres are there they absorb scatter reflected so there is a general straight line between line of sight between the transmitter and the receiver but there are also different 
reflection refraction scattering over there so ultimately between transmitter and receiver the uh, uh, vector ion addition of all these paths and finally the signal become deteriorated or uh, loses its strength antenna parameters so how the antenna are designed this is discussed over there and the wavelength is dependent on c by f c is the velocity of light f is the frequency of operation so these are the antenna diameter and corresponding antenna gain this is some parameters are shown over there and this is a particular antenna diameter that is taken over there one meter and corresponding gain for different frequencies shown over there radiation pattern and angular beam width how the beam is related to radiation pattern that has been discussed earlier radiated power so eirp effective isotropic radiated power pt is the transmitted power divided by 4 pi because it is considering a circular or spherical radiation pattern so the gt is the gain of the antenna so gt pt divided by 4 pi so it is the power per unit solid angle in the sphere the product pt gt is called effective isotropic radiated power in what power flux density in the receiving power it is pt gt divided by 4 pi into a divided by r square that is to phi into a so pt gt by 4 pi r square is represented by phi it is magnitude or power flux density watt per meter squared So it is power flux density, how it is shown and how it is calculated earlier, it is shown over there, same thing. Receive signal power, so how the signal is received, it is shown over there, PT GT divided by 4 pi R square into A, receiving antenna effective area. So it is frequency versus path loss, how it is, it is showing. So here, the effective area of an antenna is given by GR, gain of the antenna divided by 4 pi lambda squared in meter squared unit. Hence an expression for the receipt power is shown by this. Receipt power is equal to PTGT into 1 by loss into gain of the antenna. The loss 4 pi r by lambda whole square is known as free space path loss or free space loss. This is a sum it is showing. Already we have discussed this one. So there are additional losses are there in practice it is necessary to take account of additional losses due to various cases. Number one attenuation of waves as they propagate through the atmosphere. Losses in the transmitting and receiving equipment. Depointing losses, polarization, mismatch losses. So these are the losses how it is it is showing. This is the loss between paths, so this is path loss between two antennas, it is the transmitting antenna, it is the receiving antenna. There are another loss that is feeder loss, it is in between transmitter and transmitter antenna and in between receiver and receiver antenna. In the both the cases, there are losses and this is known as feeder losses. So taking into account the feeder losses, EIRP, effective radiated isotropic power is given by PTH GT divided by the feeder loss. In case of receiver also, receive signal divided by feeder loss. This is depointing losses. Rain attenuation, drain is because we have already discussed that the long distance has to cover the signal between transmitter and receiver. This distance in case of satellite is thousands of miles. So there are 
different type of criteria in the atmospheres are there, rain may be there. So rain is very disturbing in case of satellite communication. Rain attenuation is one of the very great factor and that is given by this PR is equal to PR in the neutral condition that is without rain condition e to the power minus alpha r. Alpha, alpha is a exponent, uh, it is a exponent. It, there are standard values of this exponents are there. So this is a representation, this is a graphical representation and this is a particular scenario. This is a transmitter and this is a satellite and uh, how this elevation angle depends on the atmospheric rain. It is shown over there as this elevation angle increases, rain attenuation decreases. Frequency reuse. Frequency reuse, it is the same as that of cellular communication system. Frequency reuse is nothing but using the same frequency within a particular geographical region again and again to increase efficiency of the channel. But we cannot use this frequency consecutively or in the next cell. We have to use it with a particular separation so that there should not be any signal interference or disturbance between two channels or side by side channels. So the design should be very important from the point of view of frequency reuse. Due to the frequency reuse, it increases the channel efficiency as well as uh, the cost of the system reduces. So this is the basic concept of frequency reuse. This one and this one is the same frequency, but they are not in the same region. They are different region and there is a lot of difference between these two because they are in the different zones. So there are, there are exact specification they are maintaining so that there should be no interference between these two same channel. This is known as co-channel but they will not interfere in each other because of sufficient distance between these two. This is a schematic. This is a satellite and the same frequency rate they are same but they are using again and again with a particular pattern or particular distance. Frequency reuse consists of using the same frequency band several times in such a way as to increase the total capacity of the network without increasing the allocated bandwidth. In case of a multi-beam satellite, the isolation resulting from antenna directivity can be exploited to reuse the same frequency band in separate beam coverages. A beam is associated with a given polarization and a given coverage. In both cases, the bandwidth allocated to the system is B. The system uses this bandwidth B centered on the carrier frequency for uplink FU and for downlink FD for the satellite. In case of reuse by orthogonal polarization, the bandwidth B is used twice only. In case of reused by angular separation, the bandwidth B can be reused as many times as possible until the interference as low as possible. Both types of uh, frequency reuse can be combined. Noise power spectral density at the receiving input. The origin of noise, noise consists of all unwanted contribution whose power adds to the wanted carrier power. It reduces the ability of the receiver to reproduce correctly the information content of the received wanted carrier. The origin of the noises are as follows. The noise emitted by natural sources of radiation located within the antenna reception area. 2. The noise generated by the components in the receiving equipment. Carriers from transmitter other than those which it is wished to receive are also 
classed as noise. The noise is described as interference. So we have discussed this one. So this is nothing but spectral density of white noise. White noise is nothing but the combination of all noise as it is like color. If all color mixed together, it becomes white. Same concept over there. It has all bandwidth in all frequency in equal portions. So ultimately it becomes white noise. So the bandwidth is Bn and N0 is the power spectral density. So the bandwidth is equal to N0 into Bn watt. So this is a hypothetical model how the noise temperature of a noise source can be described or generated. K is the Boltzmann constant but it is not the actual it is a model. K is the Boltzmann constant. So the, this noise power is equal to K T0 GB. G is the power gain of the system, B is the bandwidth. And T0 is equal to 290 Kelvin. So the noise figure is given by 1 plus T by T0. So noise figure versus noise temperature, it is given by this graphical model. We have already discussed this one earlier. We have already discussed this model. This is clear sky and this is with rain. So conclusion of this noise temperature is the noise temperature Ta is a function of frequency, elevation angle, atmospheric condition. Now today's topic is system noise temperature. So this is a receiver, this is an antenna and this is the feeder and this is the feeder loss. So this is the temperature T1. After this feeder loss, the temperature become T2 is equal to T. So this T1 is equal to, this is the temperature at the antenna receiving side. So this is the antenna receiving side temperature plus, this is the loss at receiver minus one into Tf plus this is the transmitter, this part, the receiver part, transmitter temperature divided by the gain of this transmitter. Now T2, T2 is equal to T1 divided by the losses. So ultimately T2 becomes this. Individual link performance. The link performance is evaluated as the ratio of the received carrier power C to the noise power spectral density N0 and is quoted as C by N0. This is very important carrier to noise ratio expressed in Hertz. One can evaluate the link performance using other ratios besides carrier to noise ratio. Carrier power to noise power spectral density ratio at receiver input. The power received at the receiver input is that of the carrier. Hence, carrier is equal to PRX we can consider because carrier is the main source of power in case of when the signal is transmitted. So carrier power is equal to receiver power. So receiver power is equal to this we have already find in the earlier section and this is T2 in the earlier slides we have calculated T2 is equal to this. Thus the noise power spectral density at the same point N0 is equal to KT. Hence C by NO here from here C by NO as this is equal to C is equal to PRX and NO is equal to K into T. In place of T we can write this. Therefore carrier to noise ratio by substituting the values of the previous two equation, we are getting this in Hertz. This expression can be written as 
transmitted power EIRP divided by 1 divided by path loss into composite receiver gain noise temperature into 1 by K hertz. Now C by N0 can also be expressed as a function of the power flux density phi. C by N0 is equal to phi lambda square divided by 4 pi composite receiver gain divided by noise temperature into 1 by K hertz where phi is equal to transmitter EIRP divided by 4 pi r square watt per meter square. Now carrier to noise ratio introduces three factors. EIRP which characterizes the transmitting equipment 1 by L losses the which characterize the transmission medium because loss depend on the transmitter medium how the signal is passing through the medium the transmission medium is important the composite receiving gain divided by noise temperature which characterizes the receiving equipment it is called the figure of merit or g by t of the receiving equipment so we have almost completed the section these are the references. Before we conclude the section, we will do some MATLAB over there. So, this is a MATLAB how the satellite link can be designed. It has been shown over there. So, the CLC, close all, clear all, these are normal use of any MATLAB so that before if something is written over there it will be cleared if there is any figure it will be cleared and if there is written over there everything will be clear and CLC will start from afresh so display enter uplink parameter so it will be displayed means we have to supply now then this will be some line will be dot dot line will be there for that reason it has come then transmitter power by default some values are written over there in the green it will it is a comment line I have arranged this beforehand so that it will be easier to put the values so transmitter power for you can change obviously you can change this value as you like but whenever you start any programming beforehand you should uh, set some values so that a considerable good amount of output should come then you change of your own then path loss earth station back of losses is 3 then earth station branching and feeder losses is 4 earth station transmitter antenna gain is 64 additional uplink atmospheric losses is 0.6 and all these values are given there we will do slowly so I'm running the program. Let's see what is happening. So see, uplink parameters. Then this dot dot line has come. Art station transmitter output power. Obviously it is 33 overwritten. 33. Then art station back of loss. 3, 3, enter. Feeder loss, 4. Antenna gain, 64. You can change, but in the initial case, we should adhere the standard values. Then after completing this, you change of your own. 64. Then the atmospheric losses. Atmospheric losses, 0 0.6. Free space path loss 206.5. See here, here 206.5, 206.5. Then GT ratio minus 5.3, minus 5.3.
branching and feeder loss. It is zero. Then bit rate. This is given over there 120 into 10 to the power. then it is downlink parameter. So for the downlink parameter satellite transmitted output power 10 satellite back of losses 0 0.1 it is given over there see Then branching and feeder losses, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, antenna gain, 30.8, atmospheric losses, zero point four. Atmospheric losses zero point Here, zero point zero point four. Then free space path loss two zero five point six two zero five point six. GTE ratio 37.7 37.7 art station branching and feeder losses art station branching and feeder losses 0 bit rate 120 into 10 to the power 6 bracket complete so this is the answer so these are the values we have entered this value we have entered this value so the result is coming uplink budget EIRP effective isotropic radiated power of art station is 90 dB watt carrier power density at the satellite antenna minus 117.1 dB watt carrier to noise ratio at the satellite is equal to 106.201209 dB EB by NO it is the bit rate corresponding it is the ratio of power 25.409397 dB for a minimum bandwidth system C carrier to noise ratio 30.180609 dB. Same for downlink EIRP 40.2 dB watt carrier power density at the R station antenna is minus 165.8 dB watt 
career to noise ratio at the arts receiving center 100.501209 db eb by no is equal to 19.709397 db for a minimum bandwidth system now career to noise ratio is equal to 24.480609 db eb by no overall Therefore, energy with respect to noise overall is equal to 18.674255 dB. This is a particular case study. We can change the value so that how the efficiency is coming, we can find this. So, with this, we have an overall idea of how the satellite can be designed, a satellite and our station can be designed so that we can get an idea for an overall the budget for a satellite system so we are concluding we are ending our today's and it is also ending the module 2 we will start in the next class from module 3 so we are ending over there thank you we are ending the session